In the previous video, we discussed uh, uh, about the first and the second stanza. We discussed about the poet and what the about the poem, what the poet is uh, scared of, and he gave in the first two stanza the description of the shed. So now let's begin with the third stanza of the poem. The analysis of the third stanza. My brother says there's a ghost in the shed who hides under the rotten floorboards. Now his brother, the poet's brother, he has made up a story that there is a ghost that lives inside the shed. And he hides, What is where is the hiding place of that ghost? It is, he hides under the rotten floorboards. Now rotten here is what? It means uh, decayed or decomposing, right? Rotten. Something that is uh, not in good uh, position or the original state, it is being uh, decomposed or decayed. So you have, if you see uh, anything that likes out of a vegetable or or any fruit, if you've not uh, taken good con uh, taken care or not kept inside, it becomes rotten. If you uh, so just like that, who hides under the rotten floorboards? Floorboards are the wooden boards, uh, the, uh, the, the floors and there are wooden boards over there. So the flooring basically of the shed. So it is the rotten floor here. Uh, it depicts the condition of the shed. So it's old. It's not looked after and the hinges are uh, very rusty. So uh, the floorboards, uh, it's not taken care of. So it's all rotten. It's been decayed. Right, so only a ghost can live in that uh, filthy conditions. So the brother gives uh, tells a story to his. Um, uh, the brother gives a story to the poet uh, that there's a ghost inside the shed and he lives under the rotten floorboards. And if I dare to set foot inside, uh, he'll jump out and chop off my head. Now, if I dare, is the poet, he's saying that if he dares, if he takes up the, uh, he muster up the courage to get inside, to set a foot inside the shed, he'll just jump off from that place and just chop off his, cut his head into pieces, right? So he'll be dead. He is ready to kill the poet. So this is a story that uh, the poet's brother has uh, told to the poet. Right, so but I'll take he, he uh, the poet says that but I'll take a peek one day. But he he still uh, after listening to his story also his brother's story, the poet is still very curious and he desires to take one day a look inside. He he, he wants to satisfy his curiosity, the wonder uh, wonder that lies inside that shed. What is so secretive about that shed? What mystery can lie inside that shed? So he says that after all this, although there's a ghost, he still wants to take uh, take a look inside the shed. So now let's move on to the last stanza, stanza number four. I know that there isn't really a ghost. My brother tells lies to keep the shed for his den. Now the poet is saying that he believes and he is re reassuring himself. And he says that I don't think there is really a ghost, right? And he thinks that this is just a made up of story. This is his brother's all lies so that he is uh, kept away from that shed uh, for his den, uh, basically for his brother's uh, place, a uh, hiding place, you could say, or his brother's place for his own pursuits. So he wants... Uh, the poet believes that this is all a lie that his brother has told him and there simply there is no one inside there is no such thing or a ghost that lives right and if uh, there isn't anyone staring or making a strange noises and he believes and he's again uh, thinking and contemplating on the fact that there, there's no one inside and no one is staring at me or making any strange noises it is just his, uh, 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 his uh, imagination. So this is not nothing, anything real in uh, that there is a ghost or there are some noises, right? So this is nothing sort of a real. And uh, 
the spider has been gone from his web since I don't know when. Now he's also saying that the cobwebs or the spider webs that are in uh, there on the doors, on the windows or inside the shed in that the webs are just there and the spiders have long gone. They are no more uh, inside there, inside the shed. So he says that I'll go into that shed one day soon but not just yet. So the poet is saying that uh, he he wants to satisfy his curiosity. So he says that he'll go one day. He might visit that shed. He might go and peep in, not just peep through the windows or uh, look uh, pass through that shed, but actually go inside that shed and see what lies inside. But right now he's not that much ready. He's not. He'll not go. Not just yet. He's waiting for the right time. Because he's still uh, scared, uh, sort of fearful right now. So he uh, still thinks that one day he will surely visit uh, and go inside the shed and see what uh, secret lies in that shed. So this is what uh, the poem was about, the shed and about the child. There was a speaker in it. And the story behind that thing, there's a conflict uh, problem that has been here of the uh, in the mind of the poet whether to visit and uh, go inside that or uh, uh, the shed or not because of the story that his brother has told him about a ghost that is living inside the shed. So, uh, and he described the poet has given the description of uh, the shed first of all. And uh, then the story of his brother, uh, how he is, uh, because of his story that he is fearful and scared. and But he still thinks and hopes for the best that one day he will uh, look inside the shed. Right, so now let's see. Uh, I told you that this uh, poem uh, is a narrative poem. Yes, so let's first discuss about that also. What is a narrative poetry? Yeah, so it is a narrative poem where the child was is the speaker. So now characteristics of a narrative poetry. Now, first of all, the poetry of a narrative poetry tells a story. But it is also a poem. Now this is this is a poem, uh, the shed. But it is also telling you about a story. There's a storyline that the about the shed and the story of his brother and how he wants to visit the shed, but he couldn't. And someday he'll do that. He'll be, look inside the shed. So it's a, it tells about a story, and but it is also it is basically but a poem. Now, the story elements that are there in this poem are what? They are characters, there's a setting, a plot. A plot basically is a storyline with an action or a, and conflict. Or if could there could be any resolution to that conflict or the dialogue. We'll look into and we'll find out the story elements if it is there in this poem or not. First, let's discuss about the characteristics of the this uh, of the narrative poetry. So these are the story elements that a narrative poetry has. The characters, the setting, the plot, right? The conflict, the resolution if it has any. Then this narrative poetry also includes author's thoughts and uh, feelings. The, what does the author feels about his thoughts about that story, his thoughts, his feelings, his emotions, right? The external story in turn, the basically the story that is being running through and the internally what does he feel about it. And there's also another uh, characteristics of the narrative poetry is that it has a figurative language and the poetic uh, devices or the poetic techniques that are there. Like simile, metaphor, personification, rhyme and rhythm. It has also that, uh, the, the one of the characteristics of a narrative poetry. And also it can be written from a different point of view. The poem can be written from a different point of view. It could be the first person or the third person. Right? This poem is uh, written with the first person. Why? Because he has used I and not he, she. 
so it's the first person or and uh, there's also the author's purpose is to entertain and to leave the reader with the story to remember and also the purpose of a narrative poetry is what to entertain and there's a story format to it so that the story is there with the reader he remembers it through this poem so through the poem he the poet tries to build up a story and tell a story to the readers so these are the characteristics of a narrative poetry now let's see if we can find out any of the characteristics of the narrative poetry the narrative poem in this in this poem the shed so here in this poem the shed the characters as you can see what are the characters that are there in this poem they are first of all the poet right and his brother they are the two characters that you found uh, you can find in this uh, poem then what is the setting of this poem the setting is of the shed the shed is the talking point here right which is at the bottom of the garden he, the poet gives the description of the shed and, and whether he should go inside visit inside the shed or not right so the setting is uh, the of the poem is of the shed right and now what is the plot uh, of the poem the plot or the storyline uh, although it's a poem but there's a story attached to it what could be the story right the story that we've discussed that there's a poet there he there's a shed uh, at the bottom of the garden of the poet and there's uh, it's old it's dusty the hinges are all rusty and the creaking voice as he passes through it he could hear and the he the the window panes are all uh, the three window panes are cracked they are broken and so he doesn't want to he wants to visit the look inside and peeping through the window but the, his brother has uh, told him a story about a ghost there is a ghost that who lives inside the shed and he wants to chop his head off right so he should be fearful he sh uh, he's scared the poet is scared to go inside the shed but some day he still is hoping that these are uh, he hopes that he will visit this shed and he believes that his brother is all telling the lies so some day he might visit the and open that door and see inside he for himself what lies inside the shed so this is the story of this poem basically so this is the storyline or the plot of this poem now what is the conflict or oh, the conflict basically means a struggle in the poet's mind right there is a struggle in the poet's mind whether to go inside whether or not to go inside because his brother has also warned about there is a ghost inside the shed right so he is contemplating on that and he says that he will visit inside he will go to that shed but right now but not yet one day he will go but not right now right so there's a conflict whether to uh, whether there's a ghost inside or not whether to go inside the shed or not so there's a conflict inside the poet's mind now what is the point of view that's whether the uh, poem is in the first person or the third person as i told you before also i he has used i in the poem right so it's a point of view of the poet is of the first person the there's no particular uh, identifiable features of a figurative language or the poetic devices in this poem but there are certain descriptive descriptions of the shed and sort of the emotions of the poem so there's a descriptive words that the poet has used to describe the shed so basically these are the characteristics of a narrative poem that you can find in the poem yourself also if you read once again the poem these are the word meanings that are discussed earlier while i was explaining the stanzas to you you can see it write it in your notebooks hinge a movable joint on which a door or gate swings or holds on to a creak a creaking noise or a creaking a creaking voice if you say so it's a high pitched or an unpleasant sound that it the it's been created by the door because the hinges are all rusty right it's old peep it's to look through a narrow opening or a narrow hole when you look through that right there is a that's called a peep see in this uh, 
if you can see here also in this third picture the person here is peeping through that window right here is if you can see here in this third picture so that is a peep looking through a narrow opening or a hole because the window panes were broken so he wants to look the boy wants to look inside or peep through the window and see inside the shed rotten rotten means decaying or decomposing okay so that's it for the poem today the shed by frank flynn